regardless of like if your mom is white, like the world sees you as black. So one drop rule. Yeah, it's the one drop. So it's like yo, you carry yourself with poise, you carry yourself this way and that way. It's like don't just use it. and so it's like these things that he instills in you um, as a black man, not as a as a, as a biracial mixed boy. You know, mm-hmm. it's like you try to like protect your innocence for as long as possible. Right, yeah, right, exactly. And he did it, yeah, and, 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 I, and I'm grateful for that. Let me see you go back, 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 go back. But, like I said, it was never something that I identified with, even even though I went to a, to a private all white school. And I think um, that allowed me to kind of, to, to, sh- to just shift when I did make that change um, to public school in a way that was kind of just like seamless because I wasn't thinking about race. I wasn't thinking, I had like, I I hung out with my black cousins, I hung out with my white cousins. And like, it wasn't something that was at the forefront of my mind. But did you act differently with them? With who? Did you do different things? Did you you notice like something different about your experiences with the different? I mean, obviously it's gonna be different. I noticed the way that I felt around certain people. Okay. Like, I was more comfortable up until like uh, ninth or tenth, ninth grade probably, around white people. And then that shifted, that slowly progressed as I became like more comfortable with myself. Um, because when I was when I was younger, like I would get super quiet around like my dad's side of the family uh, and my mom's side of the family. But I was just like. There, there was never like this code switching. It was never like like I became someone different. I was just like became this instant observer of like both sides. Right. And how do I be black? How right, do I how, be like, white? Like what is going mm-hmm. on? Because mm-hmm. that's an experience that so many people don't have. It's like you're going to Thanksgiving, and your black side, and like something completely different is happening. You know, like mm-hmm. something completely conversations that are happening are not happening at a white Thanksgiving dinner table. You know, so it's like you're experiencing these things as like an eight year old and you don't really have like your voice is not valued. <laughs> so it's like you really have you either have you can interact with your white cousins, your black cousins, which I did, but when it comes to like adults in the situation, you're observing and it's like what's going on? And um, yeah, I mean that that certain that certainly shaped that certainly shaped my outlook. All of these things. And it, I think I think that that is that's inside a lot of us. It's like we don't we don't realize a lot of the emotions that we have for for, for, for being black, uh, like these subconscious feelings that, that are always there. Um, and it, and it's like you know when when your grandma or whoever yells at you, you or you don't feel like they're treating you the right way, or they, you feel like they might say no. It's like yeah, that could be because I'm just a bad kid, <laughs> or it could be because I'm. Um, but but the point is, it's like that is still there, regardless. Of, right. You know, that and that I think is the larger issue. Like, mm-hmm. Why why do we why are we even like aware of this thing? Like, like why do we have to be aware? Yeah. Of that thing. Yeah. It's like that is the larger issue. It's like this other thing that we carry with us is like this feeling of like always kind of Uncertain. because because we're mixed we and we know about another side of mm-hmm. like a side that isn't full of hatred right where we're like white people don't hate everybody right mm-hmm. we, we know that because we live that but there's we so we battle like internally I think like I battle internally with like the feelings that I have now after the election and just like with people random people and just like anything I just have to like kind of constantly kind of put myself in check um, because I always have this like a re-examine just like and just kind of question how I think about things and and bring myself back to but but so let's talk about your experience like growing up and yeah so I also went to private school growing up until I was in high school okay so that definitely shaped my upbringing for sure and yet that was mostly white kids um it we had a lot of Asian students. Um, it was like a, it was like a, it was a, it was an elementary school that a lot of like university professors sent their kids. So mm-hmm. it was super international. Mm-hmm. And looking back, I think that definitely shaped me as a person as well. Like my best friends were like Chinese and Indian and mm-hmm. um, from 
South America, you know, South Africa. So that's awesome. that was that was really awesome. Yeah, um, and I I didn't feel color struck the way that I do now. Definitely not. I mean, there are things that set me apart. Um, you know, I had cornrows. Like my other friends did different things with their hair. Um, like there were definitely comments about my dad and stuff um, about my skin tone. I remember that, but it all felt very harmless. Just like children recognizing differences about each other without like placing all like the baggage that adults do, all the constructs. Um, and I danced as a child, and I also played basketball. Um, like in the community, went to basketball camps. Um, I was a ball girl for U of M's team, so it was really through like sports and like dance, like that was my introduction to like black people, um, and so I had like my black girlfriend group who I like play ball with, um, and then I had like my you know school friend group, um, but it was always definitely a little bit segregated, um, and I definitely was different around my black friends and my white friends for sure, um, definitely different. And then I got to high school and I went to a public school and. Uh, again, like played basketball. I was on a team with. There was like we had like one token white girl. So I went from like being like the token black girl to being on like in a school where like there was like one token white girl. So it was just like a total reversal, and mm -hmm. I loved it. Like I felt so at home. Um, I did notice that like even throughout high school, I had like my black friend group and like my white friend group. Mm -hmm. um, and it was definitely kind of or not white, but like non-black. Okay. Um, and I definitely felt as if. Even then, like I was a little different between the two. Like I pride myself on my ability to, like I try and stay as authentic as possible. Like I, I really do believe that I'm myself regardless. Um, but there are little ways that you like little little nuances where like your tone changes or like what you said, like just conversational. Yeah, you tone. kind of adapt. Yeah, but I mean, like what is that? To the situation. What is that? Is that like the connection that you have? You know, because it's like when I see like my friend, like some of my good friends that are that are black. It's like I feel something different inside of me so than true. when I feel than when I see some of my like white friends or Arab friends. Mm -hmm. It's like all of these feelings are evoking something different outside of, out of me. So it's not necessarily like in my opinion, you know, we talk you know, people talk about quotes or something things like that. It's like it really is, it's like if you want to attribute it to race, then feel free, but could it be something else? Is it is, is, is the question. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, we have Greg here to offer the other side of of that. Like, could it be something else? Like, that's the question, though, isn't it? With all like that's racial things, like, is it really that he was threatening, or was he really just like right. reaching for something? It makes me think like, of Get Out. Have y'all seen that? Yeah. And um, of course. <laughs> yeah, so good, so good. And so, I mean, yeah, the director he he talked about how he with the movie he wanted to recreate that feeling of paranoia and that feeling of anxiety that every black person feels like when they're in a situation that's potentially hostile or you just get that you know into a into a feeling like something's not right and that immediate that immediate thought that comes to you is it because I'm black or us as black women is this because I'm a woman is this because I'm a black woman mm -hmm. and regardless of whether or not that voice is true we're conditioned after so many years of just the small, like, I mean, the word microaggressions comes to mind, but the small mm -hmm. degradations, humiliations, the ways that we have been exiled, ostracized, mm -hmm. made different because of our race, mm -hmm. and gendered race, um, that it's, you can't take that lens off. So there, there have been situations where, you know, I have brought race into it unnecessarily because that's unfortunately how I've been conditioned. And I want to say, like, all this... This is this is me as like a hella light skin, like conventionally like conforming to European beauty standards. Like that affords me a level of privilege that like so so like I mean it absolutely has changed how I interact with white people. White people aren't afraid of me. I speak the white people's language. You know I'm comfortable around them. I'm the type of blackness that they can consume really digestibly. So I think that's also like a very important thing that I just wanted to mention before we go on in terms of like how both white and black people perceive me and like my ability that's to, really important to navigate between the two worlds because that that exists and it's like but I was talking with Imani and some other friends and just like how my my color or my hair or whatever the texture can be a problem for for either side yes. oh right God, and it can so be like something that yeah 
and it can be like something that like separates you from both even though it's like well this is it's curly like this because I'm black but it's also curly like this because I'm white mm -hmm. and then you know it's just like how and then because of how we think about color and how like light the the beliefs with light skin and dark skin and things like that um, affects like how you're perceived with with white people and black people and and the prejudgments that happen. Mm -hmm. It's it's real. I have five other siblings, so uh, that has been our entire family is like a really cool kind of experiment and just like. Genetics and like Punnett squares, like who's gonna turn out looking white, who's gonna turn out looking black. Mm. And my littlest brother, my mom is like blonde, blue eyed, like very pale. And my littlest brother came out looking like smack like her. Like he has blue eyes, he has white skin, he has blonde hair, blonde curly hair, but not like you know, like people think he's Jewish or like just a white boy with like okay. curly blonde hair. Um, and he you is, can tell he's black though. I think you can too. I think it's obvious. Like when you see him next to my dad, my black father, it's like, oh, well. Like, I feel like most times you can kind of tell, even if they are tell. really dead, light. Like the, the pigment is like not like he's just super light skin. I think. But he's yeah. white passing. Like people okay. might people think he's ethnic something, but he is white passing, and so For he sure. walks through the world as like this white man, and For like sure. that's so not has not been my experience at all. So. It's crazy, and like, I mean, he's had crazy shit happen to him, like cops pulling my dad over and like asking him, like, do you know this man? No like, way. Like, people, parents calling, like, the authorities because they thought my dad was kidnapping him from like t-ball practice, like, that's how, like, little they look. What? Like, when my brother was little, he had like really, really bright blonde hair and these really blue eyes and he was so white and yeah. my dad was just like so black and it freaked people out and I came in somewhere in the middle, like, I'm the, I'm the darkest skin of my siblings. Hmm. Um, I have, uh, like, after my older sister, I have, like, the second coarsest hair texture. Okay. Um, and I have a twin sister who... I think that's, I think that's something to mention right there, is, like, the fact that you are even, like, taking note of that within a family, you know? So true, so it's true. It's like, because my, because my sister and I would do that too, it's like, who's darker, who's darker? Or, like, why is Alyssa's hair like this? You know, like, if I grow my hair out, why is it, like, softer or, like, why is it more coarse? this and that and it's like that is something to know I agree. I agree yeah so having a twin sister that's automatically a mirror that like that the comparisons yes. never stop in so many ways um <coughs> and she's like just like a shade lighter than me okay but it's just so interesting how people have always treated us differently i don't know if it's this i don't know if it's the color or the fact that she has like green eyes and her curl texture is so much looser like people think she's like arabic or like italian mm. like, Sometimes she doesn't even get half black, and like no one questions my blackness. Um, and so, as adults, being able to talk about that and having siblings, and my older, my two oldest siblings have like freckles everywhere, and like my brother has like a red beard, and like, I mean, wow. they they have to navigate like white and black worlds in a way, like being more white passing um, that I don't in a way. So it's it's really interesting because the things that I envied so much from my siblings, like. I wanted my mom's blue eyes so bad. I wanted her blonde hair, and like my other siblings got that, and I and I didn't. Um, so those things that I envied, like the more Eurocentric beauty standards, is like now, like I'm so happy that I inherited sure. these black standards. And I think like we have conversations with like Katie, like my sister, like I wish that like like my natural hair is like a whole afro, and she's like I wish that my hair could do that. Like, I'll never have that volume. And I'm like wow, like I would have to sit in the salon chair 30 minutes after her. I had to let the relaxer sit. 30 minutes longer than her, like having my skull like burning and shit just so I could like achieve like, you know, wow. similar. So just as a twin, like That's awesome. it was that, like, it was an interesting parallel. I, I guess it's really interesting, right? It's like right there, 30 minutes. Like there's this like number that you can like take and compare. I care less about what white people think. Like they no longer run my decisions. Like especially white men. Like I don't give a fuck. Like, mm -hmm. Excuse me, I don't know if you want to wear No, but <laughs> Um, I just, I'm so much less concerned with fitting in with white people, with being attracted to white men, to saying the right thing in the right places. Um, I don't care. And, uh, yeah, just that, that really does come with maturity and growth and just knowing who you are, but I don't sacrifice who I am for anybody. Um, and that extends to my gender as well, my sexuality, all of that is encompassed in there. Awesome. Yeah, I don't know if it can be attributed to, uh... I mean, I think there's, 
without a doubt, um, an element of, of maturation that plays into um, learning about yourself and things. But I think it's exactly what you just said. It's like you were more self-conscious of these things. And the more self-conscious that you become, it's like you become consciously aware of certain um, patterns or um, tendencies that you have. And that allows for that growth. But the point is, <laughs> the point is, is, when you are aware of these things, it allows for you to grow and, and kind of become more comfortable within yourself. And then as that occurs, you're not as uh, apt to, to, to switch around people because then you're sacrificing something within yourself. And it's like, you know, just like you said, it's like, fuck about Like, I, I'm who I am, so. Can I, can I speak about white men real quick? Yeah. Because I've got some shit 